Hello and welcome to my channel. Today in this video, I'll be sharing with you a really quick and simple card that I made using Lawn Fun's Magic Iris and the camera add-on. Um, and I only have the uh, the core Magic Iris set, so I thought getting the camera add-on is a great way to um, kind of spruce up the front of the Iris card. And the camera add-on does have a second add-on, which is the pull tab add-on here. And this one's interesting. It's meant to be paired with the Let's Toast pull tab, which I don't have, but I have similar um kind of pull tab interaction dies. And so I may try this one next. And um, if I do, that'll be a separate video. Okay, so then I think I've got all of my pieces die cut here. So I'll show you how to put together this camera magic iris card. And one of the reasons why I really love this is because you can create really quick cards because this camera, um, takes up nearly an entire A2 card front and the die will cut out the um, camera piece that you see here but if you want it two-tone like the silver one where I've got the black stripe in the center all you have to do is just die cut it a second time um, in this case I used black and I chose to cut it along the stitch line but there is an embossed line if you want to cut it along that line for a slightly different look because I'm actually going to take these two black pieces and I'm going to overlay them on top of this brown camera for um, another card. And I think I'll probably try the pull tab add-on when I go to make the sam second camera card. So um, you can definitely create a lot of different looks using pattern papers or you can even do inking uh, techniques to create the... Um, color or style for your camera. So a lot of fun different things that you can do there. And in addition to the main camera, you also have a few accent pieces. So here is the little um, flash uh, uh, little light area and the camera is um, does have a debossed outline and that um, shows you exactly where to place this detail. And I'm struggling a little bit with my glue because I'm, I'm coming to the end of the bottle, but I'll refill it within this session here. So, um, so my gluing will, uh, not look as, uh, belabored. <laughs> um, the other, uh, little bit of detail and I think technically that round circle is meant to be like an indicator light, almost um, like a, th a recording light, but I decided to back it with silver. I'm just trying to find that little piece of silver scrap. Right? And um, you can just glue that uh, whatever color you want. I chose uh, silver foil just to um, bring in some of the silver foil that I used on the flash over to the other side of the card. Um, and uh, I didn't want to introduce additional colors, so I wanted to keep everything very, very tone on tone here. And I'm just going to glue that uh, right behind the uh, circle cut out. And I did get a little bit of glue that kind of oozed out on top of my foil paper, so I'll, I'll wipe that up in a second here. But this last um, little bit of detail is the shutter button, and it actually comes, there's two different dies one that will cut sort of the entire piece and then a second one that cuts that detail layer which I've chosen um, to cut in black and I really like that the extra little detail of the um, the little cut lines that are vertical like that because it almost reminds me of the dial that you'll often have on an SLR camera that lets you kind of choose quickly you know scroll through and choose your aperture setting or other settings so love all the uh, the attention to detail with this camera and as I mentioned before because the scale of it is so large you can really put together a quick card <laughs> with this. So um, I'm not gonna have hard, I'm not gonna actually have any stamping at all besides actually the sentiment on the inside of my card. So this is a really fast card to put together. Um, now, if you've never 
put together a the magic iris. It the set itself doesn't come with instructions, um, but there are a lot of tutorial videos out there that um, I availed myself of so that I could learn how to do this. But once you've done it a couple times, then then it'll become um, a lot easier to to continue to do yourself without having to watch a video every time because the components are fairly simple. So, okay, so to start off, you've got this, um, I call it a donut ring. Um, so you've got the donut ring and you'll want to die cut three of these. And um, the nice thing is that the circle that drops out of the center there, that also has a um, stitched line border outline. So you can use that either on you know the card that you're making or on a different card. Um, then you want to take this kind of spindly looking um, piece here and you want to line that up on one of the three donut rings that you have and it does line up um, pretty easily. You just kind of put it in the center there until um, it kind of fills that center aperture and run that through your die cutting machine again and that will give you this piece here and that's where um, your uh, the moving mechanisms of the magic iris will slot into um, these pieces here and then the extra little um, stitch outline right here those are placement um, markers for or indicators for where you're going to put um, the stabilizer pieces which are the uh, rectangular pieces that have that slightly curved edge on um, either ends, I've die cut that out of white. And then you've got the um, three sausage looking pieces here. And keep in mind, these pieces will be visible on your card. Pretty much um, everything else shouldn't be visible but these three pieces will be so you want to make sure that you're choosing a, um, a cardstock that you're okay with um, being visible and then we've got the actual pull tab which is the thing that the card recipient is going to um, move in order to open and close the magic iris and the camera add-on actually comes with its own pull tab and it's slightly longer as you can see than the original one that comes in the Magic Iris uh, base set by about half an inch or so and I think that's because the camera itself is so large that it needs to extend a little bit further in order for it to be visible and, um, and uh, be such that the person can actually uh, grab onto it. And it does also come with the um, decorative layer too. So um, I've cut that out in a separate color. I think I use black and that way um, it's got the little arrow that's cut out of it so you can um, you can use this in a lot of different ways. In fact you can take the arrow that drops out of that and just um, glue the arrow onto a plain pull tab and um, that just gives you a different look and then you can kind of nothing goes to waste and you can use that arrow on a second card. So to start assembly we're going to start with the ring that has all of the extra uh, die cuts and stitch lines and you just want to place your uh, three sausages right into those slots and these are designed so that they are um, the exact same curve and width as your donut ring. And so if you, if you kind of hold, um, your ring from the inside and the outer edges, you'll find that it, it, um, will be nice and flush if it's lined up correctly. So you'll just want to continue to kind of slot these three in. They are going to overlap a little bit and, and that's perfectly okay. That's what you want. And you do want to make sure that your, um, Everything's faced in the same direction. So you want the professional edge uh, up facing you and you want all of the sausages to be uh, curving in the same direction. So um, ultimately you'll you'll end up with something like this. And um, one of the things that you'll notice on each of these rings is that it has um, little cut lines at the 
at the end there. So you can see those little plus signs or X marks, however you want to uh, see them. And that's where we're actually going to put our adhesive. Um, so I'm just going to bring in a piece of white paper here because maybe that'll make it a little easier to see um, what's going on since everything's in black. And I chose to make the, to cut my donut rings out of black just in case if I didn't have everything completely lined up correctly, it would be, it would look a little bit less um, noticeable if it were in black since the, my uh, sausage rings are black. So um, but if you have everything lined up, then you shouldn't really see those. So here's a closer look at those um, uh, little indicator marks for where we're going to put our adhesive. So all each of the three sausages will have a little mini glue dot. And this is what Lawn Fun recommends to use is the uh, mini glue dots in three sixteenths of an inch or five millimeters. So um, it doesn't necessarily have to be this brand, but I imagine the size of the glue dot may make a difference. I haven't really experimented much with using different sizes of glue dots or different types of adhesives. Um, since I had this on hand, I decided I'll just use what what they recommend, but I, I may try other other glues um, just to see if if it really does make a difference. But they are very specific in recommending this, so, um, so I'm going to go with that. Okay, so... Um, these all got a little bit jumbled, so I'm just going to reset them and um, get them all lined up again. And I find that um, I'm trying to hold it up and, and show you, but I find that it's a lot easier to just uh, line this up on the table instead of trying to juggle it midair and then um, and then get a... Uh, that next ring on top of it. So, um, so here I'm just going to leave it, um, flat on my table as I kind of make my, um, adjustments because I want to make sure that these, um, are all lined up so that they're flush with that inner, um, edge of the ring below it and the outer edge, um, of the ring. Um, and that way, cause that's going to be, how it's going to look when it's fully open, when the mechanism is fully open. So you just want to make sure that, you know, you don't have um, these uh, kind of out of alignment because we're going to actually glue a second donut ring right on top. So once you've got that where you like it, um, there's only glue on the three places. So you can, you can kind of, um, you know, pinch down where there isn't glue while you line up the ring on top. And then once everything is where you like it, you can um, just push down on where the, where the three glue dots are. So um, once that, that looks good to you, then we're going to go ahead and um, flip this over to the back side. So we're looking at the back of that at the stack of donut rings and you can see those extra stitch lines that um that are uh along the center um aperture so that is going to be where you put these stabilizer pieces and i um i like to position these so that they are um not flush against the um uh, inner uh, edge of the ring and that way you give the whole mechanism enough uh, room for it to move because if you compress this down too tightly then it might make it difficult for those sausage uh, pieces to uh, open and close. So you just want to run some adhesive and um, you can probably use anything here. So for um, uh, just for speed, I'm going to use my Tombow tape runner and I'm just going from that um, kind of stitched uh, indicator area all the way out to the outer ring. And um, and you can kind of see that these uh, stabilizer pieces are curved and that curve does match perfectly the, um, the inner 
the inner curve of our donut ring. So I just want to place that in there and um, close, but not, you know, right flush up against the inner um, edge. And you don't want to leave yourself so much slack be, uh, because there's the potential that that it could be visible um, from the front of your card if it's if it's a lot that you've left there. But um, but there's a convenient stitch line uh, along the inner um, and along the outer edges, and so I just go slightly past that stitch line, and I find that that's um, probably enough. So here I'm just going to go ahead and put the detail piece on top of my full tab, and. Um, Again, you can use any adhesive here. I'm using a pearlized paper, so um, so I used a little bit of wet glue just to make sure that that there's a good stick. And um, now that we have our pull tab piece, you just, in terms of placement, you can use any of the three stabilizer pieces as a um, reference point for attaching the pull tab. And um, similar to those stabilizer pieces, this does have a nice curved edge that matches that um, inner curve. And you want to place it to the right of one of the stabilizer pieces. Any of them will do because they are spaced um, equally from one another, so it doesn't matter which one. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. I'm not going down the entire length of the pull tab because I just need gl enough glue to attach it to the ring. And you want to go um, right up against the stabilizer piece and you want to line that up so that the curve along the inside matches and you'll see that you should have um, a nice V between the stabilizer and your pull tab. So um, so that's what you're looking for there. And the reason the placement is important is because um, this is what will um, pull the mechanism that's going to open and close and if you want your uh, magic iris to fully open and fully close they've already done all the math and and everything to um, determine that uh, the distance that it needs to travel and so getting it right up against these stabilizer pieces is um, that perfect perfect amount so now all we have to do is um, go ahead and put more adhesive onto um, the other end of the stabilizer piece and we're going to pop a third donut ring right on top and um, here I'm just going to hold everything from the inner and outer edge because that will make sure that it lines up and I'm going to wrap the stabilizer piece over to the top of that and that's what's going to hold um, all, this entire stack, the entire mechanism together. And so you just want to go around and do this on all three, for all three of the stabilizer pieces. And again, you don't want to go all the way to that inner edge. You just want to go, um, you know, right up to or a little bit past the stitch line is what I uh, use as a reference point. And that then allows, you know, you can see just that little bit of gap there. So there's, it just allows that little bit of slack so that um, the moving mechanisms within this um, piece, within this component can freely move. If it's too, you know, kind of compressed, then it might be a little bit difficult for the, um, these, the sausage pieces to kind of slide in and out. So here I'm testing my mechanism, which anytime I'm, um, we're doing using um, uh, or creating an interactive or pop-up card, anything that has kind of moving components. I like to test it multiple times throughout the the whole process of making it because if you happen to accidentally get glue somewhere that you didn't intend and your mechanism isn't sliding carefully or smoothly, then um, your best chance of correcting that is right after you've put down that glue. Okay, so then in terms of um, placement, you just want to make sure that your mechanism is closed um, and then you can line it, line up your camera 
uh, with the aperture there. And the reason why you want to make sure that it's closed when you line this up is because that's how your card recipient is going to first see this. So you want to make sure that tab is exposed enough so that they can easily um, notice it and grab it in order to open it. And um, I'm going to go ahead and just put the the uh, camera on um, and attach it onto my ring. And here's when I uh, take a pause to actually refill my glue. <laughs> so now that I've got um, my glue bottle all nice and filled, um, things should go a little bit, a little bit smoother here. So, um, and the other reason why I play with the mechanism a lot during the making of um, my interactive cards is also because it's just fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, once you've made these, it's just, even, you know, though I've made it a couple times, it's still fun, you know, every time. So, um, one thing I'm pointing out here is that I did see on a video, I don't know if it was on the Lanfon site itself, but they said that you could actually fold these tabs in if you want, and that's just so that it doesn't stick out when, um, and is, uh, becomes visible when the, iris is open. Um, with the camera front, the camera front is so large that I don't think those tabs would have been visible anyways, but um, I'm folding them in anyhow just in case. So, um, so you know, at this point I'm, I'm already fairly certain that, that, <laughs> that the mechanism still works. I just like to open and close it. Okay, so we do want to make sure that it's closed um, so that we can get it well positioned. And you can actually put glue along this entire ring. Just make sure you don't get any in the center here because those center pieces, those those were our sausage pieces and that's what needs to um, move around. And so you don't want to get any extra glue oozing over into um, the center. So I'm staying you know, clear of the, the center just so that uh, there's no, um, or at least very little chance of my glue actually oozing into the center. But as I mentioned before, anytime um, you add a component or you're working with glue on your mechanism, you just want to make sure that uh, to continue to test your mechanism so that you don't get glue where you don't want it and that it continues to um, to move the way that you want. So now that we have um, our glue on, I'm just going to position it where I want it. So I want to make sure that that pull tab sticks out. It's visible, easy to grab. And then I want to make sure that my aperture, the two, the ring that's um, cut out of the camera and the magic iris ring are all uh, lined up and, and centered. And so um, that's pretty much, you know, nearly, we're nearly done. Um, really the hardest part, I think, was just lining up um, those three sausage rings and uh, getting the second uh, donut ring attached to the top of it. And that wasn't all that hard. I, it's easier to do when it's on your table and you just move it around. But um, but really, look how fun that is. And we're pretty much, pretty much done, really, almost with the entire card, too, because I'm keeping this so um, easy and simple. And this definitely comes together very quickly. So uh, I've got my card base here, and I've just got a little piece of um, pattern paper. And you'll see here that uh, the camera really does nearly take up the entire card front. So, um, oh, so I, I did lose a little bit of footage, but, um, what, what we're doing is we're going to put a photo, uh, behind the aperture. So when you open, um, the magic iris, it's going to reveal this photo. And this is actually a birthday card for my father-in-law. And so my husband and I thought it would be hilarious to put his photo behind there. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just, giving myself um, some pencil marks just so that I can know where to place my um, photo down. If um, if you were working with like a larger um, piece behind here, um, you could possibly attach this to your camera 
um, to the back of your camera and that might might be a little bit easier to to get things to really line up but um but i i printed this um in order to kind of conserve on my photo paper because i actually use a canon selfie printer which prints four by six photos and it's a uh, dye sublimation printer so it actually prints you know actual photo quality um photos on photo paper and it's really nice because it, it puts a fourth kind of layer right over the top which is kind of a clear coat that protects the photo from things like fingerprint smudges and um, things like that. So it's really nice. It's almost like, um, you know, it's shy of, you know, getting your photos printed at like a one hour photo mark. So, um, really handy to use and I use it a lot for my mini albums uh, as well, especially ones that I give as gifts because I like to add like one photo as an example of how to place photos in their album. And so I'll often, um, just print a photo of, uh, the gift recipient, whoever I'm giving the mini album to. And, uh, what's nice is you can kind of collage your photos together. So on one four by six, um, uh, photo piece of photo paper, you can, you can print multiple. So I printed one here because the aperture of the camera is only about two by two. So I just took up like a two by three block of um, one sheet of paper and I printed that out and um, along with two other photos. So that is, um, so once I get that in place, I'm going to just make sure that it's where, it's where I want it. And, um, and I'm not going to kind of press down too hard because they'll give me a little bit of time to actually adjust. And I actually wanted to move this down a little bit because um, uh, it's not quite lining up where I want it to be. And also the other thing that I didn't um, kind of point out uh, intentionally was that you do want to uh, make sure that when the, the magic iris is closed, you kind of want to make note of your camera position because you want to make sure that that pull tab, because it does extend past your camera. If you're, ha if you need to put this card into an envelope, um, and you don't want to have to make a standard, uh, a custom envelope, then you do want to make sure to make note of, um, how far beyond your camera the pull tab extends. Um, now, when we go to attach this to our card base, the only place we can put adhesive is on those white stabilizer pieces. So you can see here like how how much um, that pull tab extends beyond the, uh, the camera. So I'm going to use foam. Um, and the reason why I'm using foam, and I think in retrospect, um, I think I, I should have doubled up on my foam, in fact, but, um, the reason for the foam though is so that it lifts the pull tab away from the card base and it just gives the card recipient a little bit more space to, um, to, to grab at the, the pull tab or to, you know, um, to move it. And so, uh, I think the mechanism itself will work just fine, even if you use regular adhesive here. But again, it's just ensuring that there's enough clearance, enough, um, you know, room. And especially if you're, um, giving it to somebody who, um, maybe has, an adult versus a kid because adults have, you know, larger, larger fingers, right? And so it might be a little bit harder for them to kind of slide that pull tab if there isn't a lot of clearance between the pull tab itself and the card base um, versus a kid who, you know, might have smaller fingers and it might be easier for them to, to get at that. So just, you know, small things to, to keep um, in mind and be mindful of when, when you're doing this. But uh, whatever you use, as long as you only put adhesive on those three stabilizer pieces, you're going to be fine. And, um, and I'm, I'm placing this uh, while it's open 
just so that I can make sure it's lined up with the photo. But you do want to, again, bearing um, in mind where your pull tab is going to be um, when it's closed, you do want to keep that in mind as well. And, um, and it's something that I, you know, took sort of a mental note of, <laughs> but, um, but I do want to mention it explicitly because, um, you do want to, to make sure that there's enough room for your, um, pull tab to still stay on your card. So you can see my pull tab is still within the card base. And, um, it's not the end of the world if it's sticking out because even with a standard, uh, you know, A2 size envelope, the envelope does give a little bit of room beyond the card base. So you should be fine, but you just want to make sure make sure that you're aware of that. So here I'm going to actually die cut my sentiment and I'm just going to put um, say cheese. And it'll be funny because, you know, he'll say cheese and then he'll open the camera and there will be a photo of him. <laughs> so um, I imagine it would be equally fun to have the pull tab um, version and he can pull out the photo of of himself so that would be rather cute too so i'm just gonna use um my little uh prism die cutting machine and i did have to um well, i guess i didn't have to but i did buy the gemini mini um die cutting machine because the prism it i i'm not 100 percent certain on this but i don't know that spellbinders is uh, continuing, um, to sell it anymore. So I don't know how long, um, they are gonna, um, still have plates and, and whatnot available for it. And I found that as, um, the more I use it, I've, I've started to always have to add an extra, um, piece of cardstock to shim it. So the, um, the dies just, they won't cut without, an extra shim layer. And so, uh, I thought, okay, I think maybe it's time to, to try the Gemini mini and see how that works. And so far it's, it's cutting like a dream. Um, I'm really impressed. And so I've been using that mostly, but at the moment it's, um, it's actually downstairs because I've been doing some crafting in front of the TV. So, um, so I didn't have it when I sat down to, to do this. And, um, couple of different ways you can apply glue here. I, I put some just right on my hand and, um, and I'm using little tweezers to kind of space it out. And the way that I sort of center everything, as you, um, may have already noticed was I kind of counted out all of my letters and I included the space as a letter and then figured out which letter was going to be in the middle. And then I, put that down first. So I lined, and in this case, it was the H. So I lined that up with the center and then I worked outwards from there. And this is a sentiment from, I think, Penny Black um, die set or stamp set and really cute. So that was the camera magic iris card. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And um, until my next video, happy crafting and have a fantastic day. Thanks. Bye.